Hello again and welcome. Uh, this is uh, one more tutorial for Finale 2008 notation software. As I said, most of my tips apply from the version of Finale of 2003, I'm pretty sure, and up. Uh, and I'm going to be talking about uh, toolbars and functions. Some things are uh, not very obvious of why they're there and what exactly they do. So I'm going to be covering that really quick. I will not be talking about the main tool pad. This is obvious, it's the main core of the software. I'm not going to be talking about the special tools palette that you see here on the right side. Uh, uh, this is an advanced topic, we're going to be covering it in later uh, tutorials. However, the rest of the stuff, let's start with the help. The help is a toolbar, even though me myself, I'm an advanced user, you never know when you're going to bump onto a problem, something that you don't remember, something that you have done only once and you don't remember. You find this toolbar under window where everything else is all the toolbars and all the palettes the toolbars help you check this make sure it has a check mark then you can move it around and put it wherever you want once you press it the tutorial uh, the finale manual which is very very thorough comes up and uh, that's a great help next toolbar is uh, the playback the playback uh, has certain features here and certain functions, but the m one most important thing, besides of course stopping and playing the file, is uh, to check this setting here that says, uh, by default is in measure, which says playback region, always start at, and by default is in measure, and by default is in measure 1. So imagine you're in page 3 of your score, on page 3 which means maybe measure number 25 and then you have you want to listen to that particular segment that you listen that you're working on and then you have to you know be subjected of listening the whole file again so if you want to skip that you just click the second option that says left most measure once you do that this is a by document setting so every time although even even if you haven't shut the program off and restarted it even if you have the software on, every time you create a new file, you have to check this for every file. That makes sure that if, for example, you're here and you play the and you press the play button, it's going to start at measure four. Or if you're in scroll view and say you're even further down, measure twelve, it's the leftmost measure. So you press the play and it's going to start playing on measure number twelve. Uh, this is very helpful, and I've seen students struggling, you know, with with this because they just never noticed that there is this little thing here that you just have to check. Leftmost measure is the first thing I do when I create a new document. Now, this palette here, uh, it's called the the view the view palette. I think it's a palette or a toolbar. I'm not quite sure. Uh, yeah, it's a toolbar. The view toolbar. So what this does is it changes from scroll view to page view. Now this is the scroll view that you just enter the music in a linear fashion and this is the page view. Um, there are different reasons to use one or the other and I will explain that in a later tutorial. However, um, alongside with these, uh, these two buttons that you can alter from page to scroll view, you also have this uh, button here that says show active layer only. Now what that does is that Let's say we enter some music on layer one, which is the default layer. Okay, so we have entered this. And then we want to enter some more music on the same on the same staff. So we have to choose a second layer, which is number two. And then let's say we have a series of uh, quarter notes. Okay. Now, what that does is that, it, it, by default, it's, it's not pressed. Once you press it, it shows the active layer only, which means the active layer which is selected down here in the software. So if I press it now, we only see these contents of layer 2. While I have it depressed, if I press the first layer, I only see the notes on the first layer. Now, what that does is actually very useful because let's say that I am satisfied with my the notes and the, uh, the the stuff that I have on the first layer, but the second layer is all messed up. 
Okay. So I need to change it. Instead of going individually and changing each node, I can, I can I say I want to delete the whole second layer. Uh, I go to the mass edit, the selection tool. I select them all and I press delete or backspace. That makes sure that only the contents of that second layer are erased. So you see, if I depress the button, you, see sti you still see the contents of the first layer. A and this is very helpful. So keep that in mind. So active layer only is a button that you might end up using a lot. Uh, then we have the percentage, view percentage uh, toolbar or palette. I don't know how it's classified, but again, everything is under window. Um, now this, I have these settings here, 50%, 75%, 100%, 200%, the zoom to other side, which gives you an option to put something manually, like 150%, for example, which is something that I usually uh, use uh, because it covers uh, my whole entire monitor, my screen, without the need of, you know, leaving things out. For example, the 200% is a little bit too big for my screen. So I have to, you know, keep swinging around the file to see the whole contents of, say, one line. But 150% and 135%, it works great. I, I have the, you know, the majority of the area that is shown and it's workable and it's pretty close. Uh, 